<laughs> so, Damn. Uh, I'm going to start the presentation, um, Hadi, so I'll let you know when you should start talking, okay? Uh, okay. All right. So um, thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, as always, my Guadec talks are scheduled right after lunch, so there's always the risk of people sleeping or not coming whatsoever. <laughs> so I really do appreciate people who actually came here. Um, my name is Georges. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Um, today I'm going to be talking about calendaring and the modern desktop, which is a fancy title for something that I'm not sure is a fancy subject. <laughs> um, I'm also uh, going to be talking about it with the help of uh, some contributors to GNOME Calendar, some maintainers inclu including, because Calendar is one of the few core apps in GNOME that has more than one maintainer or, for the matter of fact, more than zero maintainers, so <laughs> we're in a pretty good spot. Um, we also have Hari uh, Rana and Jean-Francois Jeff. We are supposed to have Jeff. Jeff still hasn't popped up, so I really hope that Jeff comes in time. Um, so yeah, let's, um, let's begin. So today we're going to be talking about calendaring. It's, it's mostly about num calendar but it's not strictly about GNOME Calendar. There are many interesting facts around calendaring that um, some people call it a curse, but I want to share with you because nothing better than sharing a curse with others, so everybody's cursed together. <laughs> if you made it to this talk, then probably things worked well on GNOME Calendar side. I'm going to give you all a very, very, very brief overview of how the whole thing is put together. And the side note is that it is all lurking on the, sh on the shoulders of one guy in the Czech Republic, <laughs> as things always happen. Um, we basically have one massive service, Evolution Data Server. Um, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. What might be a surprise to lots of people, is that Evolution Data Server is bigger than GTK and bigger than GNOME Builder. <laughs> and it is, I think, the second biggest code base in the entirety of GNOME. And that's just for calendaring and emails. Calendaring takes two thirds of it. So calendaring is probably the biggest feature in the GNOME desktop. Um, maybe that's. I, it's hard to come up with um, fancy comments for this because <laughs> it's such an underrated thing. You just put events and you show the events, and it's easy, right? Well, it's not. Let's let's go through this. Um, for GNOME Calendar, we just delegate everything: database, fetching calendars online, security, TLS, authentication, web call, call dev, card dev. Everything is just handled by Evolution Data Server. Um, GNOME Calendar just consumes that in a fancy form and makes it look a little prettier than Evolution, which is another consumer of Evolution Data Server. GNOME Shell also consumes from Evolution Data Server, so we can add events in GNOME Calendar and they show up in your GNOME Shell. It's cool, right? <laughs> and yeah, Evolution also uses GNOME Online accounts to like, set up some automatic web dev stuff when you add your Nextcloud thing or your Google account or your web call URL, Evolution is going to automatically pick that up and, and use that for your calendaring purposes. And I really have to rush. There's too much to cover here. Um, so what does GNOME Calendar look right now? This is also probably not a surprise to anybody. Uh, recently, we had uh, the, probably the biggest feature in the history of this application, the infinitely scrolling month, month view. And it's super cool, but also super difficult. Um, the fact that it's infinite means we cannot use any kind of time-limited or bounded uh, widget tree like GTK adjustment or GTK list view or GTK uh, list box or anything like that. So it has to be, it has to be everything has to be custom. And we do 
a lot of work to make it look like it's infinite. So you can just scroll up and down, left and right, and things are just going to work. It's pretty fancy. As part of the mobile enablement of the app, we got a sidebar uh, a couple of years ago. Um, still have mixed feelings about it, but apparently people enjoy the looks of a sidebar based application, and here we are. Um, but I'm not here to talk about how GNOME Calendar is awesome. You all know that, but <laughs> um, I want to talk about the difficulties of developing a calendaring application and uh, the hidden secrets that we have to keep everybody away from for their own sanity. Um, 352 pages of RFCs to memorize. It's not fun. Um, we got fantastic little details. Has anybody heard of leap seconds? Um, has anybody ever heard of the day that the American government decided to add uh, an extra second to a random day to make some kind of military budgeting work? <laughs> um, has anybody ever heard of, I don't know, uh, the Uzbekistan government deciding that the next day was going to be a daylight saving time day and just flipping it over overnight? <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of thing that we have to deal with. Um, calendaring is essentially a political thing. The planet Earth doesn't really care about how we divide days. It's going to keep spinning on its own pace, regardless of how we organize that spinning. Um, we have moon cycles. We have year cycles. We have 3,000-year um, cycles. We have 15,000-year cycles. And none of some only parts of that are encoded in our calendaring. Um, yeah, we can show a map in GNOME Calendar because that's um, apparently a source of many heated debates over the <laughs> past 30 years or so. Uh, we can show flags in GNOME Calendar because that's also apparently a source of heated debates for many decades. Um, we got some really fancy situations like, um, I don't know, have you ever heard of the time zone minus 14, or is it plus 14? Because if you divide the Earth in 24 parts from a latitudinal perspective, still some people are going to decide that they are plus 14, not minus 10. And then you get 26-hour days hidden in a calendar. Maybe the seven-week standard that the Greeks invented uh, 3,500 years ago is not going to last. Um, maybe, I don't know, who knows, who knows what the future holds for a calendaring application? It is essentially a political thing, isn't it? Um, and on top of that, we get the best part, the creme de la creme, which is the proprietary services that read the 352 pages of RFCs, RFCs and say, OK, we're not doing that. <laughs> It is things like Google. Uh, this is a very recent dis discovery, even. Um, apparently, there are two alternative ways to describe events that were added to the RFC, amended to the RFCs, to, so, so that applications can embed like URLs or HTML in them and show in an nice UI. And then Google goes there and says, OK, so I'm going to put the HTML in the non-alternative way that is supposed to be plain text. So now we have to parse everything all the time, regardless of what the spec says. Um, yeah, I think everyone just decided to collectively not follow everything to the letter, because it's, on the one hand, you have insane RFCs, and the other hand, you have insane applications. So the in-between is just as crazy. Um, Calendar has some really complicated widgetry. I gave you all a hint about this with the infinite timeline. Um, it is not the only complex thing. I feel like we are pushing GTK to certain limits when doing this and pushing the platform as a whole, like how much data can Dbus transfer in a microsecond until it starts stuttering the UI with um, 3,000 events. This is, not a, this, is, this is a real case uh, that I had bug report for. 
Um, it's still an open problem. The fact that we have elements on top of elements that sometimes cross the boundaries of elements, widgetry that looks like children but don't act like children puts us in a very awkward situation. Um, it's still manageable, the, the application exists, but it's still pretty difficult. Um, I used to say like GNOME Calendar was the first uh, fully responsive application in GNOME, even before LibHandy was ever conceived. It's the only application that changes how children behave based on the window sizes. And that was true in 2013, and it's still true to this day. So I think we can hold ourselves <laughs> this title. And currently the biggest problem is accessibility. And it's a big problem, um, not because we don't have the infrastructure to make it accessible, but because we don't even know what an accessible calendaring application would look like. What is the accessibility tree of an application, of a calendaring application? Does anybody know? Can anybody even conceive that? So neither, neither do we. <laughs> we just don't know what an accessible applica calendaring application is. And that makes it impossible to make it accessible. Um, we have a theoretical problem be behind the practical non-implemented problem. Hadi has been experimenting with this. We've been nagging accessibility people to get their feedback on this, but it's very sparse so far. And I think the best feedback we've got is just don't make it accessible, just make the sidebar accessible and ignore all the rest, which isn't great because, like, I don't know, if you want to make uh, the, year, the, the month view keyboard navigation, if, if you want to implement keyboard navigation, for example, in the month view, suddenly you're having focus on things that are supposedly not accessible. How is the screen reader going to deal with that? That's super complicated. Um, yeah. So, in theory, we're supposed to have a project management talk from Jean Francois, but I don't know if Jean is here. I think Jean is reporting not. for duty. Are you? Oh, there you go. I don't like this disembodied voice from the north. Go ahead. Can you hear me fine? Is there any echo? Is there uh, is the sound too loud or anything like that? I think it's fine. Everybody's raising their thumbs to you. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Project management. What has managed done ever done for us? Anyway, I'll try to be quick. Um, I've been recently crowd curl maintainer, and according to haters on social media, the lead GNOME developer. Uh, but I don't actually maintain the code in Calendar. I just maintain George's morale. Um, so let, let me share with you why I care about GNOME Calendar personally, and then what I've been doing to try to make it ex exciting for everybody else as well in the past uh, year or two. Um, so let's go to uh, the next slide. Uh, basically, I, uh, as a business owner, I have a very complicated calendar, which is most of the time filled to the brim I have a ton of meetings, deadlines, obligations, and I absolutely need solid calendaring software uh, as a complement to my to-do list uh, software application for GNOME. So, uh, and according to what I've seen in recent years, GNOME Calendar is probably the only calendar software that has a chance to truly meet my long-term needs. And that's no small thing. So, and you can trust me on that because I've tested, evaluated, monitored the evolution of a pretty much every calendaring application project on the Linux desktop for the past 19 years. Uh, so when George told me in 2014 that he wanted to work on this newly born GNOME calendar project, I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. That's great, honey. Let's, uh, okay, go ahead and I'll catch up with you uh, in a couple of years and uh, see where you're at in this big pile of requirements from my, from my uh, bug filing frenzy. So and, and so I saw him again five years later at Guadec, and he told me, oh my God, time zones. What is this? I don't even. Um, and, and throughout this whole time, I can, kind of kept trying the whole app every now and then and then reporting issues. And But it, I kept depending on Google Calendar because GNOME Calendar wasn't really up to par yet. And so fast forward to 2022, GNOME Calendar 43 ported to GTK4, 
supporting light and dark mode, which is something that Google Calendar still doesn't do. Um, and having received lots of bug fixes, I tried the app again and I thought, wow, this has really improved and I can actually use this. Um, so I looked at the bug tracker and now we can go to the next slide. And I saw they had 600 open tickets and I thought, well, this is a lie. There is no way there are that many bugs in this application. And I'm going to take over this bug tracker. Let's see if I can help George get this back under control so that he can focus on fixing bugs and I can bring in some new contributors. Because I think that 600 tickets is unmanageable for a project of this size. I mean, come on. It's, quote, just, quote, a calendar UI app. It's not LibreOffice or a web browser engine. So there is a finite scope of features, like purely talking UX here. So the number of tickets should be lower in reality. So, and, and you know, when you look at this from the outside, you're like, yeah, any new contributor, potential contributor to a project like this would see that amount of tickets and they would run away because nobody sees 600 tickets and thinks, this is great. I'm going to dive right into it. Um, and that leads me to this fantastic next slide in early 2023, where I asked my co-director, can I spend an unreasonable amount of time, non-billable time to help the Gnome Calendar project turn around? And, I, and she said, go ahead. So I fired up the technical lawnmower and I spent a couple of weeks and months, um, yeah, more like months, working on a project. And I managed to close about uh, 500 issues on, during that year. And it doesn't look exactly like that in this slides chart because it seems like I just kind of mowed the lawn and then I sat in the garden with a pina colada with the tickets count saying stable. Um, but then let's go to the next slide and you will see then that um, just keeping the number stable is a continuous effort because the new tickets keep getting filed, even though a majority of the tickets are actually filed by me. Um, because as we fix fundamental bugs and implement new features, then it opens the way for new follow-up things to take their place. So it's kind of like a tower defense game except that we're destroying the targets faster than they get created now. So in the last 18 months, um, 325 issues were created and I closed 592 tickets. And so by deduplicating and triaging and doing QA and testing and you know, kind of pre-testing every merge request before George gets to review the code, um, this cleared a lot of our view and allowed us to have you know, a better overview of what needs to be done, where the actual problems are, where we stand towards my amazing vision of the desired user experience where I can, where I can actually sit in a garden with a pina conella. So, and we merged a lot of new and old cold merge requests. So that's always a great thing. Um, blah, 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 blah. So it allowed us to do something that uh, fans of uh, the agile methodology are going to cringe for, a roadmap, and, but that's a topic for another time. Um, so one day, the this chart's two lines are going to cross or get really close to crossing. Um, and the first chart from the previous slide is going to go down further, and I promise this will happen. But we need your help to get towards that goal because we always need more contributors, which leads me to the next slide. So. Of course, a lot of work remains to be done, and we are in a much better place now than we were even just a year ago. And the app is more featureful, it's more reliable. Uh, you can actually trust the time of your events most of the time. Um, and now there are new contributors, so it's very, very exciting. Um, and you can see here some statistics that I calculated at 2 a.m. last night. Uh, and there are some two key points that I want to draw your attention to here. First, uh, as we fixed some very fundamental architectural issues in the past year, we have also improved the time zones test suite quite a bit. Uh, we have solved a ton of bugs. So we don't actually have as much actual bugs as before. Only about 40% of our tickets are bugs. Most of the rest of the tickets, the remaining tickets are feature requests and enhancement requests to existing features. And the second point is about 40% of our open tickets are newcomers friendly tickets. Okay, sure, you need to be somewhat comfortable with doing development in C, 
I know this is not super cool these days. Everybody wants to do Python. Um, but this is a great learning opportunity. And if you're looking to do uh, for, for a new challenge, it's relatively easy for a newcomer to make a great impact on the world by contributing to GNOME Calendar. So send your merge requests. Feel free to join our matrix chat room. It's both a technical and an informal banter social place. It's a lot of fun. You will be part of one of a hell of a high impact, outstandingly well-managed project. That's my NECO guarantee. And now over to you to talk to some things, some of the things on my roadmap. I'm handing the mic over to, well, Harry or George. Thank you. Let's run through the rest of the slide deck. We have a roadmap. It is pretty big. Um, it is incredibly big. Um, of course, the first thing we want to get out of the way is accessibility. The, first, the only thing that we don't really know how to get out of the way is accessibility. Um, yeah, if anybody knows, let us know. Um, we're looking for funds for this. We want to see like if we can put a paid developer to get this thing done. Um, so yeah, Hadi is going to talk briefly about it. Um, we want to have time zone support because right now we just tolerate people in different time zones and events in different time zones, but we don't expose any way to change them. So it's kind of big in calendaring. Um, we want to get through invitation, um, but that's, that has a little dirty secret that it also pulls in mailing stuff to other people because that's how <laughs> that's how calendaring happens in 2024. You mail files to each other and they accept something in the web UI, it mails you back a calendaring file. Um, we want to get to the point where we, we are RFC compliant. It's super difficult. Um, there have been talks about doing a calendaring and general like portal for this kind of stuff. It's probably never going to happen because we cannot ever agree on what is an event and how they should be represented and all the kind of stuff, but we can dream right. Um, and something that is on the pipeline is maybe a new backend based on Tiny Sparkle, previously Tracker, because it's going to be much, much, much faster than Evolution Data Server, like orders of magnitude faster and better and more sane, I think. Um, yeah. For funding, let's give a minute for Hadi to talk about it. Uh, yeah, so like um, one of the things that we Hadi, want can to hear us? is, oh, wait, what? Hello? Maybe not. Hello. Okay, I'll just pick it up from here. Um, <laughs> we don't have much time to wait for it. So yeah, we've been looking for funding. Um, to get especially the accessibility parts of calendar out, but also time zones. Um, we have, um, yeah, there is a bunch of options that we can use. Uh, STF is probably the biggest one, but it's probably hard to get a final end user application funded by, by the project. Um, so yeah, we're in this situation, if anybody knows anywhere we could look into for funding, um, please get in touch. This is something we're actively looking for right now. And um, I think with that, we wrap up. We have 30 seconds for questions. If anybody has questions, please speed run them. <laughs> I don't think anybody has questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, if anybody has, if nobody has anything else, then I think we wrap up just seven minutes, exactly seven minutes off the mark. One. Run. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask a really naive question, and there's probably really good reason why this is completely impractical, but a lot of the problems you talked about as far as like time zones and things like that, it seems to me like you and Thunderbird and KDE are all solving the same problems when it comes to things like that. Is there any way for 
open source projects to all collaborate on at least some of these things that are, you know, there's no reason you should have to re rework the wheel when it comes to just handling um, locale or, or, you know, parsing events and invites. It seems like that's something that could be shared. Is that completely wrong or? Some, there, there's um, a reasonable amount of shared code um, that goes through a bunch of libraries like TimezoneDB and um, GDayTime, the Jillib library um, is a, a layer that we depend on. But there is still a massive amount of manual work that is probably specific to calendaring applications on the platform they're built into. So I think it's going to be like, I think we're already sharing quite a few things. And I don't personally see much more to be shared. It's just like everybody having to face the kind, same kind of problems um, over and over. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, we're going to start the next session immediately because we started it.